Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about winter and Teslas and driving and all that kind of stuff that has to do with winter and Teslas. There's so many misconceptions out there, folks. There's stuff about winter tires, which ones you should get, which ones you should get. Talks about loss of regen, loss of range, so many things, so many myths. Let's get down to it. Let's get to the bottom of it. Let's explain everything from ground up, from the basics all the way to the advanced stuff. This isn't going to be a short video. If you're uh, here for a short 5-10 minute video, this is probably going to be upwards of 20 minutes or so, but I want to get everything explained and uh, get everyone caught up to speed so there's no misconceptions because on the internet, on uh, Facebook groups, on forums, on Twitter and everything, there's so much uh, questions and panic. That's probably a better term for it. It's more panic than questions. People are worrying about their range, worrying about different things, and uh, nobody knows the correct answer. So Together, with me and you, we can try to figure it out and uh, we'll get to the bottom of it. Stay tuned. Okay folks, let's get started right away. There's so much misinformation, misconceptions, myths, all that kind of stuff about winter driving in Tesla. So let's start at the beginning. Let's um, figure it out that nobody knows anything about Teslas or winter driving and stuff like that. So we'll start at the basics. Basics like washer fluid. So when you get your car, it's going to have more than likely summer washer fluid in it. You might want to right away, if you haven't done so already, if you haven't used it, either use some of it up, because I don't think you can drain it, use as much as, as you can, and then just put some winter washer fluid in there. The stuff that goes down to minus 30, minus 40, I think, you even saw minus 45 or minus 50 last year. That's the kind of stuff you want in there, so the, your windshield doesn't freeze up, and when you actually use the washer fluid, it actually won't freeze. Put winter washer fluid in there. It'll help for when you're driving down the highway. Anyone that drives in the winter knows with the salt spray that comes up there, you can get a real white windshield real quick. And without washer fluid, a proper good washer fluid, that's going to make a big, huge difference. Speaking of uh, washer fluid and, and windshields and everything, you need decent wipers. Now, last year was the first year I went through winter with my Model 3, and the wipers were okay. They weren't great, they weren't winter wipers. Now I know you can get wipers in this country, in least Canada, at an automotive store like a Canadian Tire or, or any kind of hardware store. You can get proper winter wipers, ones that don't freeze up and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, the wipers that, are, that come with the car from Tesla are decent, but they're not winter wipers. So uh, if I can give you any kind of advice, change out the wipers. You gotta be able to find a size that'll actually fit the Model 3. It shouldn't be a hard issue. So you need wipers. That's number two. Moving on, something that's uh, even small but very, very uh, useful is your door seals. Now, everyone knows on any Tesla, whether it's an S, X, or 3, your doors and your windows, your windows aren't framed. They're frameless. So it's just the glass and the rubber gasket sealed around the, the door frame there. If you don't put some kind of sealant or some kind of silicone so it doesn't stick, you could get it frozen. Uh, now remember the, the characteristics and the nature of the Model 3 and the S and X2 is when you close the door, the window comes, goes up into that uh, little rubber uh, gasket there or, or rubber seal to make, a, you know, to make an actual seal. Uh, and when you open the door, it comes down a little bit. So what you want to do is you can get that stuff once again at an automotive store, whether it's the sponge application stuff or the uh, stuff in a spray bottle, and you can spray it on and just, or just wipe it on. Make sure you did that. I did that last year around this time of year before it got really cold, and it made the world a difference. I never had any problems with my doors freezing or getting locked out. I read online last year people were getting locked out because it was frozen, whether it's because they went through a car wash or whether it's because uh, it was a mild day and then in the nighttime, it went to a flash freeze or it got really cold and the next morning they couldn't open the door. So make sure you don't fall into that. It's like a five or ten dollar bottle. You can get it online or from a automotive store like I said. Speaking of rubber seals and stuff that get uh, frozen and get locked out folks, we had a big problem last year when the Model 3 first came out in the winter time with uh, frozen charge ports. It was an issue like I said whether it was the the door lid actually freezing and you couldn't get in there and you have to manually lift it up or something or pour hot water. I heard some people did that. But also what was the problem is there's a little locking pin when you put your uh, the charger nozzle inside the hole to charge. There's a little locking pin. Now, that locking pin would get frozen a lot of times. It would get frozen in the down or the up position. So you couldn't get your, uh, if it was in the up position, you couldn't get the charger in 
and that's one problem and you know it's not bad but the worst problem is people that had it plugged in overnight and the locking pin would get stuck in the up position and you couldn't pull that nozzle out the cable out now what would happen is you would strand it because now the car won't start you can't go anywhere because the nozzle stuck in there tesla realized that the locking pin or the little reservoir where it was like a drain hole or something that was too small it wasn't beefy enough so they retrofitted and they they redesigned that whole charging mechanism and it's supposed to be a lot better this year i got it replaced a lot of people got theirs replaced at the end of last winter so i haven't been able to test to see if it actually will work it's supposed to have worked and a lot of people say that it fixed a lot of their problems so this winter will be the test to see if that problem is fixed so we'll have to wait and see a lot of people complained last year that the Model 3 was not a winter car. That's garbage. The, the car is perf perfectly fine. There's a lot of ICE cars and gas cars out there that have the same issues that you have to, you have to, be, you have to use your head and make sure you do stuff properly before winter. That's for any car. So the Model 3 is no different. Uh, yes, it's made in California, but that doesn't make any difference, folks. The car is still fine to use. Um. What you also need to protect your car inside because you know what when the snow comes and it will come and you track it in on your shoes or your boots and stuff like that if you're not in the habit of banging your feet up before you get in the car you're gonna track a lot of that snow and if you've got kids that that snow will come inside and if the car is warm it'll melt so you don't want just the regular floor mats like the regular ones from um, Tesla the summer ones are the all season what they call all season ones they're not all season um, my buddy Tesla connect he did a video um, with the Tesla ones, the all-season ones, comparing it, he, he was reviewing, um, I think, Taptez, or Tapez, or I forget how it's called, reviewing those mats. I'll put a link in the description to his video, you can check that out. But there's lots of aftermarket companies that sell good floor mats or liners. Uh, I've got Tux mats, I can't say enough good things about Tux mats, other than they're a Canadian company and stuff like that. There's so many pros to have good liners, folks. There's also 3D Max Spiders, I know some of my uh, Tesla friends have those. Those are good. Uh, WeatherTechs, they make some decent ones. I used to be a WeatherTech guy until I was introduced to Tux mats. If anyone is familiar with winter, you know, you bring that stuff in, you bring the salt in, into the car, it gets into the carpet. That carpet, when it dries, it crystallizes into hard white, uh, salty crystals you don't want that in your car folks it might co cost you a couple hundred bucks or 150 bucks or something like that but it's well worth the investment to get some good mats in there moving on to something that's probably going to be a little bit more money and cost and stuff like that but it's well worth it tires big discussion like I said online about whether you need winter tires or if you don't need winter tires and what brand and you know I'm not going to recommend recommend a brand I have a Michelin X ice on mine they were great uh, I'll give you a little backstory of, of my situation when I first got my Model 3. I actually originally wanted the all-wheel drive and I ended up getting the real wheel drive. Um, and that was because of rebates and timing and when the all-wheel drive was coming out and I didn't want to wait. Long story short, I got the real wheel drive. A little thing in the back of my mind, I was a little concerned that, you know what, I live in Canada, right? And there are winters and there is snow. Is this real wheel drive with all this power to the back wheels, is it going to... Is it going to suffice for the winter? I was happily surprised, folks. You put a good set of winter snow tires on your car, whether it's rear-wheel drive. When I'm saying rear-wheel, they don't even make them anymore. They just make them for the SR Plus. So all you SR Plus folks out there, you have nothing to worry about. Trust me. The technology with the traction control and the computer system in this car with the instant torque, but it's like instant uh, reactionary torque. So... With all that combined, and I don't know the whole magic sauce that Tesla puts in there, it is one of the best, if not the best, winter driving car I've ever driven. Right now, I own a Tacoma, uh, Toyota Tacoma. I had a Highlander, an all-wheel drive Highlander before. Almost all my cars prior to the Tesla have been all-wheel drive cars, and I can honestly say this, as it being a real wheel drive car, is just as good as those all-wheel drive 4x4s. Trust me. You can't get stuck in this car. You cannot get, I tried so hard to get stuck in this car. You cannot, unless the snow is higher than the car itself, like higher than the wheel wells, that's the only way you're gonna get stuck. If you got good winter tires on there, you're absolutely fine. So invest in some good ones. If you're a member of my uh, Facebook group, the Tesla Model 3 Canadian group, if you're not a member of that uh, Facebook group, go on there now. I have a group sale with one of the tire companies locally in the GTA, Greater Toronto Area, not a video game guys. I know I've explained that to you before, but I have to say it again. There's a good uh, group buy on there right now for good tires with good tire packages and rims and stuff like that. Go check them out if you haven't already done so, but just get some good winter tires. I don't care if you get Michelin's, Pirelli's, 
hackers, I don't care what you get. Just make sure you get some good winter tires. You're gonna need it for winter. Okay, so folks, now let's move on from the stuff that you need for your car to the stuff that affects your car and, and your characteristics of the car and stuff like that and how it works. Now, let's just get right to it. You're gonna lose regen. If you don't know what regen is, it's regenerative braking. As you know, in any EV, especially in a Tesla, the minute you take your foot off the accelerator, if you have it on standard, I think it is the setting, for the Model 3, and I'm not sure about the S and X, the, the car will slow down pretty aggressively. It'll slow down uh, and it'll not come to a stop, but it'll almost come to a stop. And what it does is when it's slowing down, it's reversing the motor and it's putting energy back into the battery. Not a huge amount, but enough. And in the next uh, update, what they're doing is they're uh, tweaking the regen that's gonna make it into almost one pedal driving that it'll actually come to a complete stop, right? Right now it doesn't, the last, I think, five or 10K, you actually have to put your foot on the brake and come to a complete stop. So as of this date, if you're watching this video, the there's a new software update that's coming out that's gonna address that. That's what regen braking is. Now, we all know that regen braking goes off, or not goes off, but you get less regen braking the more energy you have in the battery. So if you have 90 to 100%, then you're not gonna get as much regen. My best analogy that I like to explain to people is like, Picture your battery pack like a glass of water. When it's full, like 90% or 100%, you're not gonna put, get much more water in there. So the same analogy applies that if you take your foot off the accelerator and you're starting to slow down, it's not gonna put energy back into the battery pack because it's already full. The BMS, the battery management mm -hmm. system, uh, and Tesla's secret sauce has it programmed mm -hmm. and coded that you don't wanna hurt the battery by trying to put more energy into the battery and stuffing it more with, uh, or overstuffing it with more energy. So it limits that. Most cars do the same thing. But what happens in the winter is the battery pack gets cold and you lose your regenerative braking. So when you take your foot off the accelerator, you have lack of regen. Or for example, if you've just parked your car all overnight and stuff like that, and it was plugged in, but it finished charging hours ago. So as the battery pack cools down, I mean, the BMS is gonna keep the battery pack at a, at a decent safe temperature, but it's gonna be cold, right? So it's gonna go down in temperature. And when you start off in the morning, you'll have a message on the screen saying uh, limited regen. And you'll see the little dots on the left-hand side of your Model 3. So that way you'll know that you can't get enough regen, that's because the battery is cold. Likewise, speaking of cold batteries, sometimes you'll get in the car and you'll look at your little icon, it shows you how much percentage or how many kilometers you have left on the battery, and you'll see a little blue snowflake, and you'll wonder what that is. Well, what that is telling you is your battery is cold. And sometimes if you click on the battery, or if you look very carefully on the battery, you'll see right around where the green ends, you'll see some blue, and you'll wonder what that is. That doesn't mean your battery's frozen, but it means it's cold soaked. Cold soaked means that that portion of the battery, whether it's that, uh, the cells there, or that module, is so cold that it can't give out energy. And once again, Tesla wants to protect the battery pack as best as it can, so it writes code into the battery management system that it doesn't use that. Now, once you start driving, and the battery pack warms up from, from using the energy and stuff like that for the other portions of the module that is good, it'll warm up that portion of the battery pack and it'll go from blue to green and then you can use it again. So you just need to drive a little bit. You don't have to be too concerned. Best thing to do to avoid any kind of cold soak or anything is keep your car plugged in at all times. I, I subscribe to the ABC method. Always be charging. And, and another saying a lot of Tesla people say is, say is a happy Tesla is a plugged in Tesla. So as long as you have your uh, Tesla plugged in, it'll maintain the battery pack and it'll keep it at a, at a, at a good temperature. Uh, you will, on, on the cold days, you still will get that cold soak, folks. It, they're, they're, even if it's plugged in, there's no way around that. That's just, that's just chemistry, that's just physics. There's nothing you can do about that. What you can do is you could be smart about your charging methods and your scheduling. Now, for example, if you have to go to work Monday to Friday and you have to leave the house at 7 a.m., for example, and you know when you park your car, it says it's gonna take three hours to charge up to whatever uh, amount you need. So instead of charging it up right away and then having it after three hours just sit there and not charge and just sits there and it just tops up every now and then, what you wanna do is if you know you gotta go at, and you're leaving at seven, maybe put the timer on for 4 a.m. So from 4 a.m. to three to 7 a.m., it'll take three hours to charge your battery to get it to where you are. So at 7 a.m. when you're ready to leave the house, all you have to do is warm up the car and then the battery pack will still be warm because it's been charging for the last three hours. That's one method. 
Remember the update I was telling you about that Tesla's putting out slowly rolling out? Well, in that update also has this, I forget the name of it. It's some like smart charging or smart conditioning or something. What it does, it's ingenious. What it does is, once again, we'll use the example I used before. So say you need to leave your work for work at 7 a.m. So what happens is you put in 7 a.m. That is what time you need to leave. Uh, the car itself will calculate uh, how much is left in the battery, how much you want to charge to, and and it'll calculate and say, okay, well, it's going to take three hours to charge. He wants to leave at 7 a.m., so at 4 a.m., I got to start charging the car. And it'll charge it up so you'll have a, uh, a nice, warm battery. What it'll actually also do, it'll also turn on your HVAC, and it'll warm the car up inside. So when you're ready to leave at 7 a.m., you'll have a warm battery pack, and you'll have a warm car. It's ingenious. Tesla should have done this long time ago. It's been, uh, it's been requested by other people for a while, and they're actually going to do it in the next update. Speaking of the inside cabin of the car, folks, and heating it up uh, like that, what a lot of people forget, it's like that in a nice car, and it's like that in any, in any EV. It takes a lot more energy and power to actually heat up the car. In the summertime, to cool down your car with AC or undo the, or roll down the windows, that's simple. It uses a little bit of energy, but it doesn't use a lot. And if you roll down your windows, it doesn't use anything at all. But in the winter time, when you need to heat it up, it takes a lot more energy. What's a good tip and I would suggest you guys to do is put on your heated seats too. I know in the SR Pluses you don't have back seats that heat up. I mean, they're in there. They're just software locked and limited so you can't use it. But put on your seat heaters, folks, because the radiated heat that comes off those seats once they get nice and toasty warm also help to heat up the inside and the, and, and the atmosphere inside the car and stuff like that. And the energy it uses to heat up those seats is a lot less energy than it takes to actually pump hot air through the vents and stuff like that. So when you're heating up your car, throw on your seats too. Other than comfort, it also is efficient and heats up your car a lot quicker. So take that advice. Okay, folks, so that's it for all the little preparations and tips and little things that you need to get ready for winter for. But it's not over. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, the real big issue loss of range yes it is true folks you will lose range that's just there's nothing you can do about it every ev loses range as a matter of fact every battery will lose some kind of energy in cold weather or cold climate it doesn't matter whether it's a nicad battery a lithium battery even lead acid batteries even though they're better for cold weather and they have cold cranking amps and stuff like that they will lose a little bit obviously not as much as lithium that's normal every ev everything that has a battery if i had a nine volt battery in my hand right now i put it in the freezer and took it back out it wouldn't perform as good as it would if it was at room temperature or if it was warmer in a warmer climate that's just normal so typically last year what i found and i had evs before this tesla too but last year what i found typically was the, the loss of range was anywhere between 20 25 percent loss yeah believe it or not it was it was up there now keep in mind that's typical typical winter a typical average cold winter night or winter day that's what i was losing now keep in mind on extreme cold days like we had some extreme cold days last winter when when i say extreme cold you guys uh, in certain climates may be laughing at me when I say I'm talking minus 30 minus 40 minus 45 mi minus 50 even we had a few of those days I know that might be normal for some people and they laugh at us here in southern Ontario to call that extreme but when you get those kind of extreme conditions then you're looking at I was probably getting like 35 to 50 percent range loss yeah that's you that, that's right you're cutting your battery almost in half at that point but this isn't all the time this isn't all winter this is extreme conditions it happens have maybe two or three maybe four times last year uh, out of the whole entire winter maybe three or four days so it's not always going to happen now keep in mind as you're picking your jaw up off the floor you're thinking wow that's a lot but you know what keep in mind internal combustion engines ice cars they lose range too now they don't lose it as much as an ev but typically they'll lose between i've heard anywhere in studies from 12 to 20 maybe 25 percent range but people don't realize that because they just don't pay attention to gas cars or something or they don't notice it but they will in the winter they lose range too like i said probably half or or a little less than half as much as an ev but it's just 
What happens with an EV? It's living with an EV. You will lose range, folks. I don't want you freaking out about it. You've got to keep in mind, it's the chemistry of the battery, the physics of the battery in cold climates and cold temperatures. It is you using the heat more and the seats, the heated seats and stuff like that, even though they're they're pretty efficient. It's the heat pumps going on, the, the heating coils, everything's heating up that cabin. Like all that kind of stuff combined is going to make you lose range. That's just, there's no way about uh, around it. I mean, some people I remember back in the day when I had my Soul EV, some guys with Soul, some guys with... Um, um, the old Nissan Leafs, they would like heat up their car and then they'd get in and they'd have their seats on and they'd have an electric blanket that they'd plug into a AC inverter and they'd have an electric. Listen, I'm not telling you how to drive or how to, to have your EV, but if you have to buy a car like a Tesla, like a Model 3 or Model S or X and spend all that kind of good money on it and you're mm -hmm. conserving energy to the point where you're using an electric blanket, I don't know. Like I said, to each their own, but in my opinion, you're doing it wrong. Like, you shouldn't need to do that. Just keep in mind of what your range is going to be, and keep in mind that you're going to lose range. So when you wake up in the morning, if you're at 450 kilometers of range, and you've got a 200-kilometer uh, trip to go on, don't expect to get there and only use 200 kilometers. You're going to use a lot more. You're going to use a lot more, folks. So keep that in mind. Don't be surprised. It is normal. Your battery is not dying. There's nothing wrong with your battery. Like, don't go online and say the sky is falling. It's normal. You just need to keep that in mind. I don't mean to sound like I'm preaching to you or lecturing you, but I see it. I see it online every day in the forums and in the groups and stuff like that. I'm seeing it, and I saw it last year too. It's normal for EVs. So, I mean, and, and keep in mind too, last year compared to this year, we've got a lot more things in the car like Sentry and Dash Cam and... Um, all these um, all these things that run in the background of the car that will drain your battery, it's called phantom drain, will drain your battery on top of losing range in the cold conditions. So keep that in mind too. If you're parked overnight and you lose a little bit of range, there's, there's so many factors that are contributing to that loss of range. Don't freak out. Don't think your battery is exploding. One other thing I'm going to add is typically uh, for most people, me, me included, um, you know you're not supposed to charge your car to 100% unless you're going on a long trip. So most people charge traditionally to 80% during the year, during the summer and everything. And 80% of, of most, whether you have an SR Plus or a long range all wheel drive or something, is normal and, and, and that's fine. That'll get you to where you're going. It should, if, if unless you need the supercharger. But what I find that I tend to do now around this time of year when it's getting colder and stuff like that and over the winter, is I up my uh, daily percentage uh, allotment from 80% to 90% because you know what you're doing is you're taking into consideration the range loss and stuff like that so you're factoring a little bit more it's safe to go to 90 you're fine I like I said I wouldn't go to 100 every day uh, on occasion when you need to go on trips and stuff like that 100 is fine you're not going to do any harm to the battery but uh, in the winter go to 90 you once again you still won't do any harm to your battery uh, Elon even said last year that 90 is fine to go to uh, our, our battery packs are very efficient we have we have the best if you got a Tesla we've got the best battery packs in the industry folks we don't have to worry about that 80 90 percent 80 sorry, 80 for the summer 90 for the winter and you'll be just fine okay so that is range loss in the winter it, as best as I can explain it that's how it works and that's what to expect Okay, folks, and that's it. In closing, I just wanted to let you know, like I said before at the very beginning, uh, if you're stuck with me throughout the whole thing, I, I commend you and I appreciate it. Like I said at the beginning, it's not going to be a short video, and uh, I don't even know how long this is. It's probably close to 20 minutes or even more. I could be wrong. It could be 30 minutes. My point is I wanted to do this video to... to you know, just get the misinformation and the misnomers and all the myths out there. Uh, I wanted to put it to bed, put it to rest. Like, so everyone that is going into winter, that's living in a wintry climate, everyone can understand and rest assured that nothing's wrong with your battery. These are what to, ex things that, what to expect. Uh, these are things that you could do to prevent and help yourself throughout the winter so you don't get stranded and locked out and this and that and you don't have winter tires on, you slide off and... I don't want to see anyone get hurt. I don't want to see anyone have to make an insurance claim. I don't want to see anyone inconvenienced. So these are the little things I put together. Um, and I'm sure I didn't touch on everything. Trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's other things out there. As a matter of fact, you know what? If you think of anything thing that I might have missed, put it down in a comment below. And after this video, we can continue the conversation in the comments below. And, uh, and we can talk back and forth and stuff like that. And maybe, if necessary, we can do, if there's enough 
stuff, we can do a, a part two. Heaven forbid, this one's long enough, we'll do a part two, but we'll see. We'll see what, what how it goes. But um, that's all I got for you today, folks. I want to thank you very much for, like I said, sticking with me and bearing with me for all this uh, winter talk and stuff like that, especially if, you didn't, if this doesn't even apply to you. But anyways, if you like this kind of stuff and you want the tips and tricks and stuff like that and the experiences that I do with the Tesla Model 3, hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already. Hit that little bell. It'll notify you when new videos come out and stuff like that. And like and share. And you know what? Like I said, I usually don't say share. You just say like. But share this because if there's other people that have EVs that are new to EVs and and miss this video and don't know about it and you want to educate them too just like I wanted to do share this video on, on any kind of platform you want and people will check it out and hopefully they will get educated and they'll learn a few things which is the whole purpose of doing this video okay thanks for watching folks we'll catch you on the next one take care bye-bye